Hey guys, this is Rick. I'd like to address the question that pops up every so often with somebody concerned about, well, how will the miners get paid if you do this or that or whatever? <laughs> you know, me coming from having founded the Pirate Party, this bears a very striking resemblance to the question, well, if you do it this way, how will the artists get paid? Which people tried hitting you over the head with like a hammer every so often and f it becomes a little bit silly at the end frankly so let's take a look at how this question should be answered or as it should be not be answered and why <laughs> how will the miners make any money if Typical examples of ifs would be if you're suggesting low transaction fees or even no transaction fees. This is a very common political trick. And when you're looking through the political playbook, you'll find it just past the middle of the book in the chapter titled Pretending to Care. This is how you can tell that people are pretending to care because the BTC camp in Bitcoin in particular likes demonizing miners as greedy, greedy bastards who are absolutely bad for the network and need to be replaced and whatnot. And, the and at the same time, pretending to care about these people's paycheck. That comes across as quite a quite inconsistent position. And that's saying it mild. So, uh, in order to get a little background here, let's look at how miners are paid today. They're paid by something called a block reward. We know that Bitcoin is built on a block chain, and every time somebody finds a new link in the chain, specifically finding a signature that is valid to create a new link in the chain, they're getting a so-called uh, a block reward, essentially a finder's fee for a new link signature. Today, that finder's fee is 12 and a half BTC or BCH, about 10,000 US dollars or 15, 1600 US dollars, depending on what chain you're on. And this is a rather high amount of money. If you were to pay this with transaction fees. This has only happened once that transaction fees have actually been as high as the block reward. And at that time there were 300,000 transactions of backlog in the mem memory pool and the transaction fees were spiking towards $50 celebrated by just about only one person who has apparently no sense of economics whatsoever. These block rewards have about every four years. They started out at 50 coins per block, 50 coins for finding one valid block signature, and about every four years they cut in half. So we've, we've cut in half twice so far to 12 and a half. And this is how new Bitcoin entered the economy. This is how new Bitcoin entered the ecosystem, as opposed to a US dollar or a euro or a, a Jack Corona or Danish Camiloso, which enter the economy effectively when somebody takes out a mortgage on a house. With very few exceptions, that is true. And I'm not making that up. That is actually how new central bank money enters the economy. So with these block rewards halving gradually, they'll eventually hit so close to zero to be zero and this happens in the year 2040 2140 sorry this happens in the year 2140 after mining 21 million coins in total this is where the 21 million bitcoin comes from it's the asymptotic curve of block rewards and the area underneath this curve is 21 million let's focus on this year 2140 part Because that, what, that's what this question amounts to. How will the miners get paid after the year 2140? 
in the face of low or no block and uh, no transaction fees. This takes us way, way back into the most basic of computer science, specifically to the person who literally wrote the book on computer programming named Donald Knuth, who's still alive, by the way, very respected, very respectable. And he wrote a book called The Art of Computer Programming. The Art of Computer Programming. One of the key takeaways from Donald Knuth is that premature optimization is the root of all evil. Premature optimization, of solving a problem before you have to solve it, is the root of all evil. This is when we observe that, you know, the year 2140, it's, a tw it's 120 years out. It's 120 years out. And trying to solve something for the year 2140 today, that's a little bit like if people in the year 1900 had been worrying about and trying to solve today's latency problems with 5G on the iPhone. And they were constrained to technology only available in the year 1900 to solve today's 5G latency problems on the iPhone. It is, frankly, extremely ridiculous. If you want another example, let's take a look at the Stone Age. Let's take at the Stone Age. People were using Flintstone for everything. St axes, making fire, making huts, you name it. But Flintstone, it is a non-renewable resource. It's a non-renewable resource. So imagine if people had actually been really concerned about Flintstone running out, observing this thing called peak Flintstone and caring about that I should have enough Flintstone here in the year 2018. You know, that would be extremely charitable of them. I would feel flattered in a little bit if they were thinking of me when they mostly had concerns getting, you know, enough food for the day. But even so, if they had held back progress in the Stone Age for concern of my supply of Flintstone, so that we'd be 3,000 years not as progressed today, I would be quite justifiably upset about that. I'm happy that they were running ahead as fast as they can and not caring about my supply of Flintstone. Because doing so would have been premature optimization. You don't know what problems you're running into at the time, so don't try to solve them ahead of time. This was not their problem to solve. This was not their problem to solve. At this, in the same way, solving the end of the block reward in the year 2140 is not our problem to solve either. It is not our problem to solve. Just for fun though, just for fun, let's see if with a very low transaction fee, there's going to be enough money to go around. Just for fun. A ballpark number of the worldwide transactions taking SWIFT data is that they're in the ballpark of five trillion with a T dollars US per day. If we're estimating the average transaction to be $10 and the average transaction fee to only be paid by 1% of transactions and that 1% of transactions paid one US dollar cent in fee, then the, the, the revenue we would end up with is $5 trillion divided by $10 transactions divided by 100, one out of every 100 transactions paying a fee divided by 100 cents to the dollar. This gives us five trillion divided by this gives five billion divided by another hundred gives 50 million per day in revenue dollars, 50 million per day. In today's money value, nota bene, 
And comparing this with today's block reward, about $10,000 each at 144 blocks per day average is about 1.5 million per day. So we can basically see that there's going to be plenty enough money to go around. And you'll notice that I'm calculating here that only one in 100 transactions pay a fee at all. I'm arguing that Bitcoin needs to get back to where it was with us. The BCH fork of Bitcoin, as compared to the BTC fork of Bitcoin, has very low transaction fees today, less than a US dollar cent. But the difference between really, really cheap and actually free is a really important psychological one. It's good if it shows up at Z as 0, 0.00, on your bank account statement. But ideally, we should get to where we were in 2012 when I was demonstrating this system to friends and saying that this transaction is actually free and where it's a rare thing that a pop-up com comes up on screen saying that this particular transaction requires a fee. You'll notice that Satoshi in his early or their early or her early correspondence said that the vast majority of transactions would always be completely free, completely free, not cheap, free. That's a sidetrack, but it's an important sidetrack about transaction fees. So how will the miners get paid? In summary, it's bad computer science to even attempt to answer this question. It is bad computer science. It's CS 101. Don't optimize prematurely. This is about people at the Stone Age trying to solve peak Flintstone for us with an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone, by the way. I have Android, just for the record. It's not our problem to solve. It's not our problem to solve. It's for people 120 years out. As in, it would be one thing if it were our problem to solve 30 years out or so. But we are never, people who are alive today are not going to be the ones solving this problem. Let it be. And as a last note, we can observe that even running the numbers as sort of a back of the napkin calculation, it really isn't a problem in the first place in any, in any case. So how will the miners get paid? It's not a problem to solve, it's not our problem to solve, and it's not a problem in the first place. In the next video, we're going to return a little bit to nonsense of nodes and talk more about Comcast. And that always gets me upset for very good reasons.